Beerus was sleeping. It was still a long time before the estimated time for him to wake up, but Whis decided to wake him up early. For this, he would use the classic bomb alarms to wake him up, which would work and wake up the god of destruction, but he was very angry for that fact. I'm here, Whis. Why don't you go and wake me up? I was dreaming with the Super Saiyan God that I told you. We're having an excellent fight. You woke me up right at the best part was coming. I hate you, Whis. But Mr. Beerus, that's just it. I believe you won't regret that I woke you up. What are you talking about, Whis? What are you referring to? You better be worth what you say. I was investigating the universe with my staff, and I observed something very interesting. A living being called my attention. It was a child with an exceptional power. I've never seen someone of this age handle that power. I think it's the subject of the premonition. What child are you talking about, Whis? Who and where is he? It seems that right now he's on the planet of King Vegeta. No, it can't be. A planet shouldn't exist. I sent him to destroy it. How's it possible this child's on a planet that doesn't exist? Sir, the planet is still intact. Look for yourself. At that moment, Whis would show the staff to Beerus, showing him that the child he mentioned was really on that planet at that moment, leaving Beerus stunned. It's not possible. I gave the order to Frieza to erase that planet from existence. Damn, Frieza didn't comply with what I ordered him. Surely he'll know that I would fall asleep and wanted to continue having control of that planet. I'll kill him as soon as I see that bastard. Mr. Beerus, it seems that this will not be necessary. Someone else is doing it right now. Don't tell me it's about... That's right, sir. It's that boy who was doing it. Beerus couldn't believe that this was possible. Whis would show him what was happening at that moment, and he would see a boy fighting with Frieza. But he couldn't recognize his face. But in the staff, he could see in the background was another boy, which Beerus could recognize instantly. He saw that it was Vegeta, the son of King Vegeta. Mr. Beerus, that child Vegeta also has exceptional powers. I could say they're equal to that child. That's not possible, Whis. The son of King Vegeta barely surpassed 5,000 power. You cannot raise so much in such a short time. Oh, so those two Saiyans are the ones who are really in my dreams. This is amazing. As far as I can see, Mr. Beerus, that child has reddish hair. What does that mean, Whis? It means he's reached the divine power. The power of a god. Can't be, Whis. It's just what I saw in my dreams. If you want, we can pay a visit to those children. Of course I want to. You woke me up from my dream and you think I'll stay here with my arms crossed? I need to fight with them and finish the work of Frieza. Destroy that planet. As you order, Mr. Beerus. At that moment, both would leave towards the planet Vegeta, where Goku and Vegeta were at that moment. Meanwhile, on the planet Vegeta, Frieza had been cornered by the extraordinary power of Goku. He realized that he could no longer do anything against the Saiyan. He immediately knew that he could not go against him. So he decided to make a very dirty and cowardly move. He decided to go down to the planet where the inhabitants were watching. And Frieza, with his hands on the ground, would concentrate a lot of power in his right hand. And this coward would say, Now I will set the rules in this. If you try to attack me, I will not hesitate to destroy this miserable planet. After all, it was what he wanted, and now I have the fate of this planet in my palm. Goku annoyed would say, You're a coward, Frieza. I never thought that you would get to this point. Then what do you propose? I demand my ship to leave at this planet, and I'll leave you in peace, I promise. Frieza's soldiers were speechless, seeing that the tyrant Frieza had surrendered, and that he had to resort to such a pitiful move like that. Frieza's lost the respect of those soldiers. Bardock and King Vegeta laughed out loud when they saw what Frieza was doing out of cowardice, which would anger Frieza, and he would think, Damn, I swear I'll come back to kill them. They're unhappy. Goku was between a rock and a hard place, because if he attacked Frieza again, it would mean the total destruction of his planet. And if he didn't attack him, it would mean leaving alive the guy who had enslaved and humiliated them for many years. Vegeta would pressure Goku to kill him, I don't care what's to happen. Kill him, Kakarot. That bastard deserves it for everything he's done to us. Well, Bardock, even if, if he wanted Frieza dead, would tell his son, Kakarot, you have to let him live. If not, everything we fought for will be in vain. Do you want to kill us all? King Vegeta thought the same as Bardock, and in the same way he would say the same to Goku, the only one who preferred that Frieza died in spite of what would happen was Vegeta. Damn, Kakarot. I promise that if you don't kill him, I'll do it myself. King Vegeta would say to his son, Shut up, Vegeta. Don't you care about this planet? You want the Saiyan race to disappear? Don't be selfish, Vegeta. This is for the good of everyone. Vegeta would pay attention to what his father said and would try to get into a fight to attack Frieza. 
but King Vegeta would hit him hard in the face, making Vegeta fall to the ground. Son, I told you not to get involved. This time, Vegeta had listened to his father, because in spite of being more powerful than his father, he was his father, and he had to obey him. Well, okay, Dad. You won. I'll leave him alive. Ash, do what you want. After thinking about it a lot, Goku would accept the proposal of Frieza, and would try to leave him alive. Okay, Frieza, I will not kill you, and I'll allow you to flee from this planet like a coward. At that moment, Frieza was about to get up and fly and leave his ship. But before this happened, a ray had pierced Frieza in a vital part, making him die instantly, as simple as a cockroach. Everyone in the place was very confused. Out of nowhere, something had killed Frieza, and had not been provoked by any of the people present. But in the distance, you could notice someone that King Vegeta and the other Saiyans knew very well. It was King Cold. King Cold's father was the one who had just killed his own son. Or so it was thought. But Cold still seemed to be alive. King Cold would approach, and Cold would immediately know that he was the one who did that. So Cold in agony would say, Father, why did you do this? I can't afford to have coward sons. I was proud of you, but this was a great disappointment. You betrayed your race by humiliating yourself before the Saiyans. I had to do it, Father. They would kill me. A child is too strong. You're an idiot. Frieza's father would say this and then finish him off. And now if Frieza had died, an absolute silence flooded the place. Nobody was able to assimilate what they had just seen. A father had finished with the life of his own son. King Cold would say that idiot was a coward. All Saiyans present had knelt down when they saw King Cold arrive, but Goku would tell them, Why are you doing that? You kneel before Frieza's father, get up immediately. Do you think you're still under the rule of those dictators? At that instant, the Saiyan would stand up. It's true, a child is right. We no longer have to behave respectfully and obedient before them. Our savior will take care of that. King Cold would stand in front of Goku, telling him, <laughs> So you're the one who caused all this trouble. The child, huh? And I see that you're the other one who had my Saiyan race under command too. I wonder if you've come to accompany your son to hell. I have nothing against you. In fact, I don't know you. And thanks for saving me the trouble. Sooner or later, I was going to kill that Frieza. My son no longer deserved to be in charge. He was a disaster. That's why I've returned. And you'll return to be under my command. I have several missions for you. There are four planets in the North Galaxy that have not yet been conquered. And I could use to sell them at a good price. King Vegeta would stand in front of him telling him, The hell are you talking about? We'll no longer receive orders from you. You're just as pathetic as your son. Don't think you're different from him. Both are disgusting. Understand that you'll no longer give us orders. Now we'll give them to you. And we order you to leave. Right now. <laughs> but what nonsense you say, King Vegeta. Since when did you become so talkative? Now you want to give me orders. This is serious. Be grateful that I'm giving you the opportunity to leave and take your son's corpse. King Cold would raise his hand to end the life of King Vegeta, but something had cut his arm and made his arm fall to the ground. King Vegeta knew that this had been done by Goku, but King Cold didn't know this, because he couldn't realize it due to the abysmal speed of Goku. So he would think that it was King Vegeta. But how? Can't be. With that arm, you were planning to kill me. So, now you've done it. I'm still giving you the chance to get the hell out. This can't be possible. My arm was cut off. How the hell did he do it? I didn't even see him move a muscle. Damn! King Cold would try to kill him again with the other arm he had left. But in the same way, this other arm would end up being cut off, leaving the tyrant with no arms at all. Damn it, my arms! Even so, King Cold was not going away, for he was no coward like his son. So he would increase all his power at once, using this last phase, but even so, King Vegeta would laugh. <laughs> so you think you have a chance to win? Saddest thing that it was not even me who did this to you. Goku would stand in front of him, levitating at the height of his face, telling him, It was me who stripped you of your arms. If you don't want me to strip you of your life, go away. This is the last chance we're going to give you. Tim Saiyans, I do what I please. None of you will give me orders. I hate that you feel superior. You're really nobody. You're insignificant. I see. You chose the worst option. What will all the cold race feel when they find out someone killed their king? It'd be devastating news for all of them. They'll not kill me. Now that I'm using all my power, I'll annihilate them all. And I'll also disintegrate this miserable planet. The regret from hell to have revealed themselves against me. Meanwhile, two guys had arrived outside the planet. Mr. Beerus, it seems we've arrived. That's right, Whis. 
While inside the planet, King Cold would attack Goku with a kick, which Goku would dodge too easily. But this battle would be interrupted, and someone would say, So, these are the sayings you keep telling me about, Whis. King Cold would immediately recognize the voice of the God of Destruction Beerus and would stop his fight to kneel before the God of Destruction. Goku, Vegeta, and the others would see Beerus, so Goku would say, What a surprise, Beerus. Nice to meet you. Wait, how do you know my name, kid? If I told you, you'd never believe me. But a pleasure. I'm Kakarot. On the side of Vegeta would welcome Beerus, but with fear, because he had trauma of what he did to his father. Beerus at that moment would end the life of King Cold, saying, It was already a nuisance. He was of no use to me. If he's not able to fulfill his purpose, he doesn't deserve to continue living. Goku would see this, realizing that it was always Beerus who was behind everything, which made him understand that it was Beerus who gave the order to Frieza to finish off the Saiyans. In that instant, the perception of Goku towards Beerus had changed completely, which he always considered a friend. Now he considers an enemy. Mr. Beerus, so it was really you who commanded to destroy this planet. And you doubted it, child. Clearly, I gave that order to Frieza. The Saiyan race was already becoming a bit annoying, so I decided that they no longer deserved to continue in this world. Damn god of destruction. I don't care if it costs me my life. 